Right lads, Acer here from Romney Custom Catapults and the, the BCA. A lot of lads has been asking me uh, tips on how to scale frames. So I thought I'd do a video in sections, compose it all into one big video and hopefully it'll help a few lads. I use different methods depending on what I'm scaling. This is a Milbro. Now, some Milbros are rounded on the edges, some are flat around the edges. I always round all my frames around the edges because I like to see the edge come out. I think it looks classier to be honest. Now, first things first, this has been drilled and prepped. But to drill, pillar drill, which we've got here, what I would do is I'd lay the catapult on. After marking it out, by the way, get, get a ruler out, do some little crosshairs on where you want the holes. I use these, they're welding clamps, you can get better clamps than this to be fair, but they do the job. Clamp, get your drill lined up, down in, for me that's pretty simple, it's, it's not rocket science, just take your time in lining it up, because once a hole's drilled, there is no going back, so just take your time. Again. Prepping, now I've prepped oh, loads of frames now, 70 or 80. It's always better to prep a frame first, I think. Reason being, once it's all scaled all up, it makes the job a little bit easier. Now, for prepping alley like this, with a cast, cast frames are hard to prep because they've got little divots in them and some scratches go deep, you can't get them out, you can only do the best you can, but with alley, I'll use aluminium oxide paper, 120 grit, brass, copper, 80 grit. Now, I'll sand the faces first. It's good if you can get some type of piece of steel or wood in there to get some pressure on. I'll scale up, up the forks like that, both sides. Once I've scaled up, then I'll scale across. Again, with some steel, make sure you're getting it nice. Right, the edges. What I use, I use a plastic rod like this. I wrap the sandpaper around. Go across the edges all the way around, bit by bit. I do in sections to make sure I'm doing a proper job. Once I've gone around there, then I'll sand it up. The reason why I sand up afterwards is because once it's scaled up, I prefer to sand up. It's easier than going across, personally. Then I use a burr in the Dremel, as you can see, which scores it all out. So I hope that has sorted out the first part of the build, which is prepping. I'm going to get uh, some scales cut for this and they'll do another video on gluing up. Cheers lads. Right lads, I'm back scaling the Milbro. One thing I forgot to tell you in the last video. Once you've got it to this stage, you're prepped and whatnot. Wash it in some soapy water and then uh, go over it with some kitchen roll to get any dirt out. Now if you look on here you'll see some pencil lines. That is where I'm going to scale it, it's a tri-scale. Now I've got all these little bits and pieces, bone, buffalo horn. Now if you look on here, there's little markers. Now on that top bit, what I've done, top line, I've got it on, like that, turned it around, and drew to the line. I put a little notch in there on the side of the frame, a little pencil line so I can see where I'm going. So I've done that one. Same on there. Like that. Bottom section quite easy to the line. Like that. Turn it around. Draw around. And there's another one on there. Quite simple to do that. Oh and centre sections as well. For the middle. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to go and cut these out with the Dremel. I'm not going to cut to the pencil lines. I'm only going to cut to the straight lines. So basically, I'll cut that straight line down, that straight line down. And the same on these, cut the straight lines down. Don't shape it in. I'm not going to bother shaping it in because I'm going to shape it in with a Dremel. Once I've cut it down straight, I'll match each piece to each other. So I can get them as close as I possibly can. That way they'll level up even on the frame. The flat edges, I'll go with the Dremel and some sandpaper to get them as smooth as I can. To get them as flush as I possibly can, if you get what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, that's the next stage. Next video will be when I've got them all cut up, liners all cut up, and I'll be gluing on. Cheers, lads. Right, lads and ladies, I'm back. Now, 
You remember the core with the lines on? I've taped up and taped around. Wasn't my idea, a uh, common sense idea really, that uh, a friend of mine done. I watched him do it and it saves me a hell of a lot of time getting glue off a frame. You still get a bit, but it's a lot better. Anyway, I've cut all these little bits and pieces up. I told you, straight lines. I've rinsed them over, but managed to keep the pencil lines. It doesn't really make a difference to me about the pencil lines now, as I know I've got everything dead centre, so I'm just lining bits up perfect. The reason where the lines do come in handy is you can score inside. You know where to do all your score work. Just remember, don't go scoring right to the edge because you might have to take it in a bit and you don't want gaps if you can help it. Now, I'm not going to show you me gluing up, but I'm going to show you the method that I'm going to use. Centre piece first, right? Now, before you do any gluing, make sure you put everything together to make sure everything's in line because once it's glued, you can't go back. So what I would then do is I will get the, one of the centre pieces, I'll line it up and I'll clamp it. Now I'll adjust it on the clamps like that. Make sure I get everything level. Now from there on this one side I can put the alley spacer in like that. Get the top bit, put it in and make sure it's all going to line up and look good. The bottom bit, you've only got to get one line as the excess doesn't matter. You just trim that off. So, yeah, mess around and make sure you're happy before you start doing any gluing and you know what's what. Right. That's pretty much it. I will then add glue to both surfaces. As I said, get this one perfect. If you get the centerpiece perfect, the rest will follow. Make sure it's not too high. You don't want to be going up too high. Just you'll know your you'll know your lines from your demo run that you've done without the glue. Once that's glued into place, make sure you've got your lines perfect. You're all level. Not I've made the mistake sometimes of not lining stuff up. It can happen. It's handmade. It will happen. But you get better and better. Don't worry about your other side matching this side because when you've cut these down, you've made sure everything is perfect with each other. So, if they're all smooth and perfect, in fact, that one's a little bit out, so I'll go in and I'll make an adjustment. And get your top pieces, get them perfect. If they're all perfect, everything will follow in. Once this side's glued and you've drilled it, you'll be able to line that side up with that one perfect. But we'll sort that out, drilling and all that crap, in the next video. So, yeah, I'm going to crack on with this, lads. Cheers. Right, lads, another quick video. As you can see, we're all clamped up. I use spring clamps, I don't get on with the other ones. Uh, when you're using little spacers, like that, make sure to push them down, because when you glue, I glued that black bit first, put a spacer on, then I put the top bit on, and pushed it down, and then clamped it. The glue underneath the spacer tends to push the spacer up and it rises. So after you've got it all clamped up, just go over it, I'll use a lollipop for gluing, uh, Magnum, they're quite nice and then just push them all down just to make sure they're in place again it's another thing I've learnt in the past where they have risen and it's left little gaps it's neither here nor there but I do like things to be perfect so little glue gaps piss me off so uh, yeah it's just another thing where everyone can get better including myself and doing stuff so yeah half an hour later we'll be on the uh, the drill Cheers.